This is Jean-Pierre from Javelin with a, with a quick preview on how to use the sustainability module inside SolidWorks. If we go to the Evaluate tab and click on Sustainability, SolidWorks will go through my assembly and pick up the material of every component. In my case, I have some components where the materials were not specified. So SolidWorks will now ask me to specify those materials before I can move on. I will specify the lights to be out of plastic, the pistons to be aluminum, alloys, and maybe choose to exclude some other components. Finally, I want the tips to be made of rubber and specify which type of rubber. Next, I can move on to, to view my results. In this window, I can now specify the region of my assembly process. In my case, I want my assembly to take, to take place in Asia, and it is built to last 10 years. I can then specify the energy required, required during the assembly process to be either electricity or natural gas, and also type in the amount of kilowatt hours needed for the assembly process. Next, I will specify uh, where this product will be used. In my case, it will be used in North America. So SOLIDWORKS will um, populate the transportation area by the, by the distance uh, between my area of my region of assembly and my region of use. I can change that to be by plane for example and type in the distance for better and for more accurate results. The end of life is also populated by default to be 33% recycled, 13% incinerated and 54% the rest goes to the landfill. My results are now generated in the form of four graphs showing me the carbon footprint, the energy um, required energy, the water and air pollution of every stage of, that, uh, of, of the life, life cycle of this product, being the material, the manufacturing, the use, the end of life and transportation. You can see that most of my impact is due to the material and the material includes the, uh, the mining of the raw ore all the way th through the process and um, transportation of those materials. If I click on the carbon graph, for example, I get the kilogram CO2 emitted during each, uh, each stage of the process. You can see the material acquisition has the biggest uh, impact. If I go back to my home, I can now click on the energy, for example, and see how that distribution is in terms of megajoules. I can do the, sa the same for air to get my results in kilograms uh, of uh, SO2 emitted and, in the w and for the water in kilograms of PO4. Now I can set my results to be my baseline so I can modify my properties and then see how my results are affected. So for example I can go back and change the region of my assembly to be North America and now you can see that uh, my results have changed and the transportation in my case it has has more than doubled since every component has to be shipped separately. If I want to mo modify the properties of an individual component all I have to do is to click on that component and I can I can access its properties such as the material so I can find similar materials with the with similar properties but maybe lower impacts. I can also specify the area of manufacturing of each material how much it's built to last, and the type of um, manufacturing process. In my case, I want those pieces to be sand casted. SOLIDWORKS will now assign um, an amount of electricity, an amount of natural gas used, and the, the scrap rate that goes to landfill. I will then specify the powder coat to be my paint, and keep the rest as is. I will click anywhere on my graphics area to update my results. And now you can see that my results are now being compared to the baseline. For example, the material now has a better result, whereas the manufacturing and the transportation have um, bigger impact. So I can keep doing this to optimize my results. Finally, I can generate my reports in form of Word documents. This was a quick preview on the sustainability module inside SOLIDWORKS. Please forward me any of your questions.